Every year, over 100 million people go through passport control to get into Britain. Most are welcome and legal, many are not. For the first time on television, we go behind the scenes with the UK Border Agency, the men and women on the front line of immigration. Tonight, sorting out excess baggage. We've got six uh, males, three are claiming to be from Afghanistan and three are from Iraq. Getting tough on illegal workers. Going to extraordinary lengths not to allow us into that room. Get out of my plate! Immigration! And no way in for the quiet American and his special friend. Hello! I'm a monster and um, I'm going back to the United States today and I am very upset about that. Heathrow is one of the busiest airports in the world. At Terminal 3, there are 50,000 passengers arriving every day. Next place, how long will you all be staying for? There you go, thank you. Thank you. Most have a legitimate reason to come into the country. Thank you, madam. OK, thanks very much. It's down to the immigration officers at the desks to spot those who don't. Officer Neil Newbury started working at Heathrow after doing a maths degree. Today, he stopped a student returning to Britain after a trip home to India. But the border agency suspect Mr Singh's college in London may be bogus. When you get these sort of letters confirming, yes, the student is studying here, yes, he can go on holiday for this amount of time, it's usually printed out on um, a better quality paper, if it's a genuine letter. I mean, I could probably print something like that myself, given a little bit of time on my own computer. So it's, it's not looking great for me at the moment, if I have to be totally honest. Officer Newbury wants to find out what the passenger is doing in the UK. He starts by checking Mr Singh's luggage for clues. You work here? Where do you work? At Tesco's. What do you study, sir? Computer science. OK. I found a lot of information about his studies, a couple of um, quite large textbooks, so that's a lot of things in his favour. At the moment I'm sort of changing my mind, I'm thinking he may be genuine now, because he's certainly got the work with him to, to confirm that he has been studying here and he's intending to complete his qualifications. But it's time to dig deeper. Officer Newbury must make sure Mr Singh is sticking to the rules. As a foreign student, he's only allowed to work a maximum of 20 hours a week. You say you also work in the UK? Oh, yeah. As, what, what do you, where do you work and what do you work as? Tesco's, nights. What does a night shift involve? What hours? It's basically one night shift is seven, so seven and a half hours. So in total it's 15 hours. OK, if you'd like to follow me, please. Before giving Mr Singh the all clear to enter the UK, Officer Newbury must be sure he's telling the truth. He gives Tesco a call. Yes, he's, he's returned back to the UK from a holiday abroad. Um, and we just want to confirm with yourselves his hours of work and how long he's actually worked for you. 36 and a half hours. OK. Even if he is actually attending his college on a rare occasion, the fact is Tesco's have confirmed he's doing 36 hours a week work for them. And as a student, he can only work 20 hours a week. There's no way around that. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's in a bit of trouble there. OK, Mr Singh, come over here, please, sir. I'll try a few more questions, OK? I'd like to follow me, please. You've already told me you're aware that you can only work 20 hours as a student. In fact, Tesco have told me that you've been working 36 and a half hours a week. It's, it's only possible because that's a night shift. So it doesn't sound like you're studying to me, to be honest. Do you now know what will happen to you? You've broken the conditions of your study visa, so your visa will be cancelled today. Whatever you want me to do, I can. There's, there's nothing that you can do now, sir. There's actually no university in, the, in, in, in all India. That you, should, you should have thought about that before you started working full-time in this country. 
He's obviously very desperate to stay here. He's saying he's, he wants to complete his course. Obviously, he's extremely desperate to do that, but um, I'm afraid it's, for me it's going to fall on deaf ears because um, he had his opportunity a little while ago to come clean to me when I asked him the first time. He's had, had his opportunity again to, to come clean with me and he, didn't, he lied to me twice and I cannot sympathise with someone like that because he lied to me. Mr Singh must wait before finding out if he can enter Britain. It's the Chief Immigration Officer who will confirm this final decision. Well, I think on balance, the fact that he has worked in breach, I think For that's the last year. significantly enough to go down the change of purpose route. No, unfortunately, you can't work here solely to support your studies. Genuine students are meant to fund their education from their sponsorship or from other sources, and they can't just work in the United Kingdom to fund their education. Okay, I've spoken to the, um, the Chief Immigration Officer with regards to what you've told me um, and what Tesco's have told us, and um, we decided to refuse to enter the United Kingdom today and cancel your visa. OK? There's no chance. Afraid not, no. No. No, you, you've worked in breach of your um, uh, visa conditions. There's, there's no way back from that, I'm afraid. Working full-time weekly can generate a lot of money, um, which can then be converted into a lot of money in their country. Um, so there's a lot of money at stake. If we had the time to actually sit down and really, really question um, and thoroughly examine every single student that comes through our borders, I think we'd find an awful lot of them that aren't actually studying here or aren't actually meeting their conditions of the visa. Um, unfortunately, with the amount of people we have coming through just this terminal alone, there's absolutely no way we can catch every single person. Mr Singh spends the night in detention before boarding the first available flight back to India. Coming up, the enforcers go after illegal workers in the Isle of Wight. You came in without your own passport. So you enter the UK legally. Trucks carrying excess baggage in Calais. It sounds like we've got another one further in who's actually crouched within a load of plastic. And in Terminal 3, difficult questions for the American who wants to marry an EU national. How long have you been together? Oh, man, y'all, God. Personal questions, man. Britain's border force faces its biggest challenge in France. Every day, almost 5,000 vehicles cross the channel from Calais. Trucks have become the transport of choice for illegal immigrants desperate to find a better life in Britain. Known as clandestines, in 2007, nearly 12,000 of them were stopped by immigration officers here at Calais. It's midnight, and on the front line tonight is Officer Emma Hogburn. She's using a probe which reveals human breathing. 30. Tonight's really busy, so we've got a lot of traffic coming through and a lot of sailings. Um, each berth tonight has got about four sailings each, so I think each ferry holds about 120 lorries. We've got a lot of freight traffic coming through tonight. All we're doing now is we're probing all the soft-sided vehicles with the CO2 units to see if we get a reading. They measure the amount of carbon dioxide that's in the vehicle, so the lower the reading, the less carbon dioxide there is. And obviously the higher the reading, the more there is, which would indicate to us that there's a possibility of people being inside the vehicle. If we get reading them, we'll have to open them. Officer Hogburn is not the only one involved. Other search teams are also at work. And they might have just found something. You are right in there? We've got two colleagues in there at the minute. There's about six people they think they've got, but they're right at the front of the vehicle. Oh! Clandestines are usually friendly. Hello. Hello. Oh, and rarely aggressive or threatening. Speak English. Yes, why not? Where, where are you from? from? I'm from the Afghani. Where? Afghan. Afghani. Afghani. Iraq. Iraq. Yeah, yeah. Are you from Iraq? Yeah. Yeah, him? Yeah. How did you get in the vehicle? Did you come in to the side? Um, we've got six uh, males. Three are claiming to be from Afghanistan and three are from Iraq. Um, and what we'll do is we'll take photos of them in situ and then we'll get them out one by one where they'll be detained so we can serve papers on them. Yeah. Stay there. 
time. <laughs> when we opened the curtains, we were quite close to the ship. So their immediate reaction was how close they were to getting onto the ship, which for them must be quite heartbreaking because they're so close to getting to the UK, but they've been stopped. So they were quite um, disappointed, to say the least. <laughs> for every clandestine found, there's the maximum of a £2,000 penalty for both the driver and the company which owns the truck. The ferries need to run on time, so the searching is relentless. Hello, can you sit down with your passport, please? The clandestines are cunning and the hiding place is imaginative. Certain loads can be really difficult to search, and um, in particular tyres, um, because they can bury themselves underneath them and they're quite difficult to sort of climb across. And um, wheelie bins are also very difficult because they can get inside, so you have to crawl across and lift up each lid individually. So quite difficult to find people and we often go home with really strange bruises as well from where we've been climbing in certain things. Officer Emma Matthews may be about to get some more bruises. The CO2 probe has registered a high reading in another lorry. Can smell. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Can definitely smell. Just here. Can Stay there. pass us the camera, Stop. please? Stay there. How many? Two here. Just five months I was here in Calais. Five months oh, in Calais. Months and you speak months. English. Where are you from? Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Stop moving, please. Well, there's two so far, but um, good possibility that some more down the front. Just one more. There is another person Three? in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's another one here. There is, yeah, I thought there was. Hello. From Afghanistan as well? Yeah. Any more people? Just three. Yeah. One chance. They always ask for one chance. They have one chance to get to England. As soon as they get to England, then they can try and claim asylum. But can't give them that chance. Yeah. OK, you just wait there. What, you're staying in, in Calais yeah. for five months? Uh. Oh, I'm sure, quite frankly, this is probably the third or fourth time in as you know many weeks or so that this has probably happened. It's all part of the uh, routine that these guys go through in order to get through to the UK. The trickle has turned into a flood. More Afghan clandestines have been found in another truck. So three people? Three? It sounds like we've got another one further in who's actually crouched within a load of plastic, basically. They're just rummaging to see if they can find some more. Come on, mate. Yeah, mate. There you go. One chance. No. Stop asking. Why? Because. Come down, please. One chance. Okay. This way. I think it's a bit too much of a coincidence that within ten minutes, till we get two lorries with three Afghanis in each, they'll be handed over to G4S to mine them while we finish the paperwork, and then they'll be taken back over to the French authorities and removed out of the control zone. So far tonight, the team have stopped 12 people from crossing the channel illegally. But not every truck is stopped. No one knows how many clandestines get through undetected. At Heathrow Terminal 3, there is a queue of people trying to get into Britain. Officer Tim Wetherill's been working these passport thefts for three years and does things by the book. He stopped a man from Chicago who says he's here to spend time with his girlfriend. An American who is a basketball player, he's coming to the UK for two months. Um, he has a Portuguese girlfriend here who he says he's coming to see. Um, when I asked him what exactly he's going to be doing in the UK, he just said working out. The concern at the moment is that, I mean, the sponsor says she has enough funds to support him and you know, we have nothing to disbelieve that claim. The worry I have is that he may possibly have been working illegally in Spain, which obviously then we would have the concern that he would do the same here. The American and his Portuguese girlfriend have been living in Spain, which is now waiting for him in arrivals downstairs. Officer Wetherill won't let them see each other until he's satisfied the man isn't planning to live and work in the UK. And what is it that you do for work? Play basketball. OK, so what is it you're actually coming over to the UK for today? Visit my girlfriend. But what plans do you have with your girlfriend with regards to sort of going forward? Obviously, she's just moved to the UK. 
long term? Do you sort of plan on moving here or planning on moving to Portugal or have you, has it not really been discussed? Actually, I'm planning on getting married. Okay. Are you engaged currently? Or? Yes. I'm here because we're making our way to the embassy to take care of the, the part of the marriage. Okay. How long have you been together? Yourself together? Ooh, man, y'all are the gun. That's personal questions, man. Well, I mean, that's related to whether or not you'd be allowed to marry in the UK. That's why I asked. For two and a half years. Okay. In order to get married in the UK, you require to have a visa before you come here. A marriage visa? Yeah. Um, the fact that obviously you're, you've stated you're planning on getting married and, and you don't have the, the visa that you required prior to coming here may, mean, may result in you being refused leave to enter into the UK today. Okay? That's not a decision that's been made yet. That's, that's nothing, but I'm just making you aware that's sort of the worst case scenario. Okay? You understand that? I don't think he's sort of been trying to deceive us at all. I don't think he's sort of tried to not tell the truth, but I, I just think he seems sort of quite naive. He wasn't aware of the fact that he needed to have this entry clearance, um, which he hasn't got, um, unfortunately. He's, I'm happy that he's sort of, he's been telling me the truth during an interview. Um, so yeah, as I say, I think it's sort of naivety rather than sort of any d deception that's gone on here. The decision to allow or refuse the American entry will be made by Officer Weatherall. But first, he will consult the chief immigration officer. So the bottom line is, he's coming here, another visitor. He's coming to get married. Yes. Plans after that are still up in the air. Still up in the air. He's, I mean, he said that mainly they're, they're probably looking at going back to Spain. Why bother coming, getting, coming here, getting yeah. a job, and why bother getting married here? If, if in the end, staying yeah. in the UK isn't part of the plan. Yeah. I'm not happy because this man has now told us he's coming to get married. He could have told us that when he first arrived. So at the moment, I'm, I am looking that this man might not qualify for entry. But obviously, given that the sponsor is an EEA national, that's some area we have to look at as well. And, um, you know, we'll make a decision while we've looked at all the facts. The American's fate is now back in Officer Weatherall's hands. We'll have to find out if it is true love. Illegal immigrants are living and working in all corners of Britain. Targeting the Isle of Wight today is a special enforcement team whose task it is to try and track them down and send them home. This border force is led by officers Simone Shepherd and Jim O'Leary. They've been told two curry houses are employing illegal workers. They can never be too sure just how good their tip-offs are. Uh, you never know what you're going to get when you go into a premises, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, you go in looking for one and come out with a dozen. Enforcement teams in 2007 arrested more than 5,000 illegal immigrants. Employers can be fined up to £10,000 for each illegal worker they employ. Are you the boss, mate? No? Do you work here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do work here, okay. Are all the cookers off? Yeah, yeah. They're all off, lovely. Did you take photocopies of any documents for your employees? No. No. We've got around about 11 people on the premises, of which he says five or six are employees. He's got no documentation with regard to their eligibility to be in the UK or, in fact, to work in the UK. Um, we could be here for a couple of hours anyway. Officer Shepherd leads a second team to another restaurant where they suspect illegal workers have been working and living. Can, can we come in, please? Go in, Bill. That's yeah. fine. Nice and gently. Hello there, immigration. Sit down. Have you got any down. identification, please? If you've got it, sir, could you get it for us, please? Some ID? ID, sir. ID. ID. ID, passport. Passport. I'm sorry to wake you up. Thank you very much. Have you got your passport? Well, can you just confirm your name for me, please, sir? Yes. Your, your name, please? My name is Johiruddin. And how did you enter the UK, sir? Oh, I'm a Jewish. He came on a visiting. So has he a passport here? Does he have a passport? No passport, no my this year. My, this somebody take in a passport, no, no my passport with somebody. So he used somebody else's passport? Yes. Which was then, so you entered the UK yes, legally? Yes. Okay, yes. and your family name? At the first restaurant, they found two workers with out of date visas. You've told me that, that last year you got a visa to visit the UK for six months. And that was last May. But therefore, I am satisfied that you have entered the United Kingdom illegally. 
I'm arresting you on suspicion of being an illegal immigrant in the United Kingdom. Yeah, he's done that. And I am arresting you at this time on suspicion of overstaying your visa. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you later rely on in court. Do you have any possessions on you, sir? Can, can, can you empty your pockets and put them on the bed for me, please? But you're working downstairs as well, aren't you? No, just sometimes. Just sometimes. How many yeah. hours do you work a week? Oh, I've got so permission about 216 hours, but I'm not working the last six, seven months. I didn't work any. Oh, so you just live here? Yeah, just live here. So do you have a copy of your passport or anything? Um, because no, sorry, I'm really do, sorry about I go out and, and this is all your money, is it? Yes, sir. But you're not working? No. Right. We've done our Home Office checks. One of the gentlemen is an overstayer, which means he's no longer got any leave to be in the UK, so he is removable. Um, so he's already been arrested and he'll be coming with us to the police station. The other gentleman has admitted to being an illegal entrant, so he's been arrested as well and he'll come with us for that interview. So we're going to sit them in a little room out of the way a moment while we go and see if we can find some documents for them in their bedroom. With the overstayer, um, hopefully if we find his passport shortly, he'll be removed back to Bangladesh. Well, I have his passport, which means he will be going home. I got your passport, it was in your jeans, wasn't it? Yeah. I'll just put those Thank in there. Thank you. But this search for illegal workers has taken a more sinister turn, one the officers cannot ignore. What have we found here? Um, we found some DVDs. Um, there's one of these that may seem slightly concerning. I don't know the nature of the DVD. I don't know whether it's promoting or um, it's against terrorism, but obviously the DVD itself looks to be um, of some concern to us, so we'll need to have a, a chat with the gentleman and perhaps refer it on to police or to special branch in order for them to uh, take it further if they deem that necessary. Two illegal workers from each restaurant were arrested. One will be immediately deported back to Bangladesh, while others will be temporarily released while their travel documents are sorted out. Both restaurants will be issued with a formal warning and face a fine if it happens again. Coming up, at Heathrow, the course of true love doesn't run smooth. So I won't even get to see my girlfriend. There, there is a chance that you won't get to see her, no. I'm not going to lie to you, because she can't come up into, through security this way. The clandestines cut up rough. Stay down! Stay down! And caught by a lie, more illegal workers. Where are you studying? In London. And where are we now? On the Isle of Wight. So how are you studying in London? At Heathrow Airport, the flights continue to pour in. A thousand planes land here every day. At Terminal 3, the American who says he's here to marry his Portuguese fiance is still waiting to hear if he'd be allowed in. Well, I mean, as a visitor, he does not qualify for entry into the UK because he's coming to get married here. What we need to do now is find out to make sure he doesn't qualify um, for entry as an unmarried partner of someone settled in the UK. In order for him to qualify for entry, the parties have to have been living together in a relationship akin to a marriage or a civil partnership which has subsisted for two years or more. So how long have the two of you been in a relationship before? How long have you sort of actually been a couple for? Uh, approximately two years and three months. And how sort of quickly after you got together did you, did you end up living together? Did you kind of have it straight away or have no, you...? No, no, no. Maybe a, a year later. A year or so later? Now, where is my fiance? She's in the arrivals area downstairs. She's actually at the airport. Okay. I got a confession, man. These last months to two months, man, I've been going through a lot. Okay. Man, my sister died. Yeah, your fiance told me. A couple of my aunties died. A lot. Of, I just need to get away from the States. Okay. Because. I, I can understand that, and you know. I just need to get away, man. I, and, and and my getaway is is, is my girlfriend. And okay. So I won't even get to see my girlfriend. There there is a chance that you won't get to see her. No, I'm not going to lie to you. because because she can't come up into through security this way. So 
Again, it's, that's not sort of cast in stone, and I haven't made any decisions yet, and no one has, but you know, I don't want to give you the hope that you know, you're going to be able to spend time with her as there is a chance you might not be able to, okay? It sounds like he has had a hard time in the States. The fiancé stated that his sister was murdered back there, which is obviously, you know, it's horrific for anyone. And, um, we, you know, we do take into account any compelling and compassionate circumstances, but given that he's also said that most of his family are still back in the States, you know, I don't think we're sort of, if we were to sort of refuse him, if that's the decision that's made, I don't think that's unduly harsh, because obviously, he, you know, he does have his family settled back there. The last time they saw each other was when he left to go back to the States from Portugal in February when his sister was murdered, and they haven't seen each other since then. I think we should refuse him entry, yeah. and I think we should refuse him entry as a visitor. Um, on the basis? On the basis of the fact that he has few ties to his own country. Yeah. There have been some discrepancies between what he said about his relationship with the sponsor initially. I mean, some discrepancies about what he said he was coming to do as well, because he didn't yeah. mention the, the wedding until, until later on. What about any compassionate circumstances that apply here? He's obviously very upset, and you know, he's been sort of close to tears and in tears throughout the interview, to be honest. Um, his main concern was whether or not he's going to get to see his girlfriend. Um, I don't think that there are compassionate circumstances that justify granting him entry into the UK, but they may possibly just to allow him to see his girlfriend. If, if we're satisfied, he's not going to abscond to possibly grant temporary admission. Temporary admission can be granted before a decision is made or, or after a decision is made. It's where we normally retain the passport and the documents, and it's where somebody is allowed outside on, on license as such. Um, they're not legally admitted to the United Kingdom, and they have to report back at certain times, and we would put a, a timely on the temporary admission. The compassion of the immigration officers means he will get one day to see his girlfriend. Then he must go back to Chicago. Officer Weatherall will hang on to his passport. If you get the marriage visa, there's absolutely nothing stopping you coming back to get married here, OK? You're OK to go now. Yes. They're both on their way. Obviously, I think, you know, they're sort of unhappy with the decision, but happy to finally sort of be back together. Um, I think we came to the sort of the right conclusion. Obviously, they didn't qualify for entry as a visitor. He didn't qualify for entry, so he was refused. Um, but we've let them sort of have a day together so they can sort of see each other. When he qualifies, when he applies for his marriage visa, assuming all's well, then he'll be sort of, you know, fine to come back here and they can uh, get married and decide where they want to live. So that's the end of that for now. In Calais, there's another frontline post for the border force. Clandestines trying to cross the channel illegally can also stow away in trucks heading for the Euro Tunnel. All right, sir, can you step down with your passport for me, please? You all clear? But Officer Mark Atwell has an extra tool in his armory to give him the edge. What is this? It's uh, a heartbeat sensor. It's connected to the machine, which is uh, just over in that cabinet there. What we do is we place this on a metal-to-metal -metal contact surface within the vehicle. The machine will then try and detect any vibrations that are caused within the vehicle, either by people moving around or even by their heartbeat. It's quite a sensitive piece of kit. With up to 30 trucks an hour coming through the search bay, it's not long before hearts are racing. Hurry it, leaves, maybe another one. Well, we've got high readings on the heartbeat, and this, this time it's actually come, it's come good. There's some people in the back. If you have a look at the readings, that's where you can sort of see that they're sort of true readings. They all look very similar. That's family group. Oh, it's a kid's Family, no, it's your mum, dad and child. Do you want them out or not? No. Oi, stay there. Stay down there. Get down there now and stay there. You get down in there. Down in there. No. Yes, stay in there. Officers won't let the clandestines out of the truck until they've moved it to a safe area. We've got a family, uh, looks like mother, father and child. Uh, possible air train nationality, um, obviously concealed down at the front of the trailer. Uh, they're wrapped in foil to try and obviously uh, prevent the CO2 detectors getting set off. But obviously using the heartbeat machine, obviously we found them that way. We'll sort them out in there. I mean, they'll know they've been found here. And then we'll just move them out there, round to the left and into the deep search bay and that's where we unload them, because uh, we don't get them out in the lanes. Sit down. Get down. Sit down. Sit down. The problem we have with this particular nationality is a communication problem. We found them, and they're obviously quite keen to get out of the vehicle as quickly as they can, because it's quite uncomfortable inside. 
but obviously we've got a duty of care towards their health and safety. So we've got to make sure they're nice and safe while the vehicle's actually moving. Keep him coming. So this is sort of four? Four so far. Papers. You've got French papers. Four people so far. Uh, I believe there's a fifth in there. But um, I'm a bit agitated at the moment, so it's a bit of a delicate situation. Back right hand corner, you reckon? Yeah. One more! Okay, I'm coming. Where are you from? Where are you from? Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Stay down! Stay down! The man's anger at the presence of the camera is a concern to the officers. If ever there's a risk of danger, they withdraw and contact the French police. We've got to think about our own safety and about the safety of illegal immigrants. So at that stage, we decided to withdraw out of the vehicle, we'll close the vehicle up and we'll call the people really in this area who know how to deal with it, which is the French police of Frontier, the PATH. Um, they'll all come in and they'll then now defuse the situation, hopefully. To avoid further provocation, the TV crew stopped filming. Come. Fifteen minutes later, unfolding events are captured on a camcorder. The clandestine climbs out of the truck. Officers can only look on, as in France, it's not their policy to use their power of arrest. One of them has gotten very violent and he was kicking and screaming in the, in the uh, deep search bay in the lorry. Um, so much so that he climbed up to the top of the roof, cut himself out and uh, as he got up onto the roof he sat on top, he was threatening to jump off, he was screaming, he was threatening our staff. And basically the other four have played up to him and so now they've, they've walked out of the deep search, there's nothing we could do about it. But they're walking so far away from us that they could just jump into another lorry and come through. Yeah, it's a really extreme situation. The Eritreans are picked up by the French police and released outside the port area. Most clandestines rarely carry any form of identity to avoid being deported by the authorities. They're free to try again to make it across the channel. In the Isle of Wight, the enforcement team is on the move again. This time, they've been tipped off that a hotel is employing illegal workers. We've got a warrant for the premises. Is it possible to speak to the manager? Hi, it's immigration. If you'd like to step that way, we're going to have a word with you. Do you speak English? Hi there. Thanks very much, Mr. Patel, please. You work here? Oh, you work here, don't you? Yes. Can you come downstairs and speak to us? From immigration, we're speaking to everybody on the premises. The team find five workers, two of them from Swaziland, who have been in the country longer than they should have. Your visa ran out in November 07? No, 07. It's 2008 now. Where is it you're studying? No, I'm studying here. Where are you studying? In London, yeah. and where are we now? Yeah. On the Isle of Wight. So how are you studying in London? Pardon? You used you used to go there sometimes. Are you studying in London now? No, you're not in London. No. Okay. We haven't got any record of either of your new applications. Two overstayers. They should have left the UK last year and the year before, actually. So they overstayed. They're leaving the UK, and we will be looking to remove them back to Swaziland. The hotel is run by a husband and wife team, but the wife is away and has the key to the office safe, where one worker claims her documents are locked away. And yes. Here is, what's your name? Okay. Do you have, can you spell that for me? Violet. Violet. <laughs> You're living on the premises here. Okay, so you've got a room upstairs, have you? Over here. Yeah. yeah. So where, is your passport in your room? No, no. So the manager's got it. Have you got any other form of identification? Yeah, we think it's in the office. In the rooms? In, no, in the office. No. In the office? All right. So have you lived in Russia before? Yeah, I'm not working holidays. Right. Have you ever had a Russian passport? <laughs> no? <laughs> you weren't born in Russia or anything? Huh? You weren't born in Russia? My mum, it's... Uh, your mum's Russian, but you're Lithuanian. 
The Lithuanians um, are part of the accession state, so are entitled under certain circumstances to work and reside in the UK, exercise treaty rights. Um, Russians are not. Russians are still a nationality that require permission to be in the UK and permission to work. The officers need proof the woman is Lithuanian. She says her documents are in the safe, so they go to check her room. She doesn't seem to have a key to that either. I said, this is your room, is it? Yeah. So where's the key? It's in the office. It was in this board with one small titty bear and the key stick. So I don't know. It's on it's the not... big bunch of keys? In this board, it was in the office. Uh, yeah. On the big bunch? On that big board. On the board? Wait, there is one big right. board like okay, that. And it's not there now. Here. So there is no, I don't know, maybe someone take it. OK, wonderful. <laughs> Let's go back. She's telling us that all her documents are in the safe. We can't access the safe. Um, there's the issue of the lost key, which just seems a little too convenient when you tie it in with uh, the whole nationality issue. Um, so they're going to um, get into her room. We can't find the key. We've, we've given her lots of opportunities to give us the key. We can't find it, so they're going to make a forced entry into the room, see if there's anything in the room that might establish either way. At the moment, that's the, that's the problem, is we can't establish one way or the other. That is my bridge! Immigration! There you go, then. Coming in. Okay, we'll take your whole wallet actually. Have you got anything else in here? Uh, what about? That might prove who you are. Yeah, I'll show this account letters. Okay. You haven't got a photocopy of your passport anyway. Photocopies? Yeah. It's uh, all photocopies we take make for me and we take in the office. This is my sister. Right, so that's all in the office as well. You've definitely got nothing else in here. You see, unfortunately, Violetta, if, if, if we can't prove who you are, you might have to come to the police station with us. Go on, there you go. We'll go back round the front. You can't prove to us who you are. OK, so we can't prove you're Lithuanian. So I'm going to arrest you on suspicion of illegal entry, and we're going to go to the police station. OK, you don't need to get upset, OK? No, but for what? We can't prove 100% that you're Lithuanian, OK? So we're going to arrest you now and take you to the police station and we're going to sort it out there where we can sort it out much easier. So I'm going to arrest you now on suspicion of illegal entry. She seems quite sincere, but there's too many cases where we come across, you know, they've been sincere and it's not the case. I mean, you, you need hard proof. You can't go on your feelings, really, unfortunately. The woman is the fourth member of staff arrested. As the officers search her room more thoroughly, they find a Lithuanian passport after all. But it's not hers. We've made a search. We've located a uh, Lithuanian passport that's actually been reported stolen or lost in 2004. The team also finds her genuine passport, proving she's from Moldova, which is not in the European Union. Uh, that's the Moldovan passport. Uh, the Moldovan passport's actually expired now, um, and also the visa inside it has expired, hence she was using the Lithuanian passport. Coming up, more bad news for the woman from Moldova. <laughs> and the American teacher with a suitcase full of friends. So these are what, for you, the students, is it? Yeah, they work on, we do it on television. It's all pulls, no strings, eh? Immigration officer Steve Hassler has been helping to man the border at Terminal 3 for two years. He stopped a passenger from America who's come to London to do some teaching, but he doesn't have a work permit. As usual, his bags will be searched before further questioning. Am I going to recognise anyone, am I? No, I can recognise anyone. No, OK. This is not what he expected to find. <laughs> So how many you got all together? I think I've got about uh, maybe 12 or 13. So these are what, for you, the students and stuff, is it? Yeah, they work on, we do it on television. And oh, okay. gets a pop And okay. how to do it. So it's, uh, it's all pulls, no strings, eh? OK, sir, right, we'll pop them back in there now. We've seen, we've, uh, we've seen them. It's not every day you have a bag search and you find uh, 15 there. Uh, puppets in there. Uh, so clearly it's more than just a holiday. You know, he's, he's coming here to work. I mean, he's, he's admitted much. You know, he's got his itinerary um, in there. 
that we can have a look at. Um, he's also mentioned that he's actually got a, um, a website about his tour to the UK. There you go. He's holding uh, a UK tour. He's got five venues. Uh, people are going to be charged £59 per person to come in and, and to work with him in one of these workshops. So um, clearly he's coming over here. He's making money. He doesn't have a work permit, unfortunately. Just want to take a seat. If I may ask you just to sit in the far corner. So why have you come to the UK? Um, have vacation and have to teach my classes. Okay. How, how much do they pay? You? Um, they're paying me between 200 and 350 pounds a piece. Is that per workshop? Per workshop. Okay. The main premise of the work permit is that you are given a permit to come over and to work and in work. the UK. Yeah. That's the problem that we have at the moment, right. okay. It's just a bit disappointing that not one of the colleges, while he's arranged to come over and teach, I've said to him, well, you actually need some sort of uh, visa. Uh, considering they'll get international students there all the time who have to have visas to study, I would have liked to have thought one of them would at least realise that he needed a work permit to come and uh, teach. He's apparently, yeah, he's got four Emmy Awards for work he's done on the Sesame Street and the Muppets as well, so, you know. It'll be a bit disappointing when I have to tell him he's refused, you know, but uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, we're going to refer it to uh, the CIO, obviously, get, get his, uh, get his uh, feedback on that, uh, and we'll take it from there. Just, uh, for me, please. Officer Hassler knows the Chief Immigration Officer cannot let the puppeteer enter the UK without a work permit but he may offer a compromise when it comes to the passenger's detention. I don't think he's a case for the holding room, is he, really? Not at all, I no. I mean, for temporary admission. yeah, definitely. That's what I was going to I was going to recommend that we give him, you know, I don't know how long you wish to give him, one, one or two days. The, um, the I first... Uh, I think we give him till late tomorrow. Well, there's a flight at 15.30. Temporary admission will allow the passenger to come into the country only until his flight home the next day. He, he took it quite calm, actually. I mean, I thought there would be a little bit more uh, emotion there. If we were to let him in, then what's to stop us letting everyone in? You know, we've got to be fair to everyone. Uh, yeah, in this instance, you feel you, you do feel genuinely sorry for him. Um, it's going to impact on him greatly, but, uh, you know, we've just got to do it. In the Isle of Wight, the woman who claimed to be Lithuanian is starting to come clean about her background. She said, my name is not Violetta, it's actually Natalia. And she came out with the details, which we'd already ascertained from a Mongolian passport, which we, sus we suspected was her, and she just confirmed that. Where else were you born? Moldova. <laughs> she's told us that she doesn't want to go back to Moldova, and the reason she's come over is because um, something was hurting her over there. She's obviously very, very upset about the whole situation. So we'll treat her nicely, we'll have a chat with her in a minute and uh, look to remove her back to Moldova. I'm very sorry, I'm very sorry because I did lie in there. What are you doing? It's your eyes. The woman will be sent back to Moldova. Two workers are removed to their homelands, Swaziland and India. A fourth is given temporary release while a claim she is making about her human rights is decided. The hotel is fined £10,000. At Terminal 3, it's time to go back home for the quiet American teacher and his puppets. Hello, I'm a monster and um, I'm going back to the United States today and I am very upset about that. Yes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I was going to teach the teachers how to use me for ESL, which means English as a second language, and also for therapy and all sorts of things like that. But of course I'm not going to be doing that. 
Oh, it's so sad. Oh, it's so sad. All the kids that won't be able to laugh. Oh, 